told them all the stories that she learned upon her way. She told them of her loneliness, she said, if I don't make it, I'll die of shame.
No, I'm not going. Nor me neither. I'm a partridge, and life is precious stone. Love of jewels, but a fire in my heart. His love has found me to my mansion, where I find my stone. Impossible to leave it. Water's my food. I water my love. When I have trouble, water washes them away. Jewels are eternal. I don't like dry land. Where do I find precious stone? How could I leave my water? Or I die. Listen to me. The Samorg is hidden behind a veil. When he appears outside this veil, even for an instant, his face is as radiant as the sun, and he casts thousands of shadows upon the earth. These shadows are burned. dazzled by her beauty. I'm amazed. I'm no longer in this world, nor yet in another. Are you thirsty? My mouth's on fire. Here's wine. All night long, the wine glowed like moth in the candlelight. All night long, the eye of the slave never left the princess's all night long, as she made love to him, she wept.
But all you have is the shell. And you? What, me? You want to come? <laughs> no, never. I'm not a bird like the others. I was driven from my kingdom, and now I'm waiting in exile for the generous soul who will give me back my throne. You see my hundred thousand colors? Oh, yes. I see your hundred thousand colors. And your two ugly feet. You take them as hardly a drop in the ocean. So why not have the ocean? Where are you off to, Sparrow? Me? Yes, you. You who were so eager to leave. Oh, me. I'm too weak. I'm as frail as a hare, and I haven't the strength of an ant. Of course, I long to see the some more, but how could a weakling like, like me make the journey? I'd die on the way. Do you remember this man? No. He was a saint. More perfect than words can utter. In him, science and wisdom shared an equal place. In the world, he was like a banner, an incomparable example to mankind. When he was about to be executed, he only spoke these words. I am the truth. So to punish him, they cut off his hands. Deep in love am I with the rose, and I desire. 
desire nothing for myself. I desire nothing but the roads, the journey to the small, beyond my strength. For the love of the roads is enough for the nightingale. How could I spend a single night away from my love? saw this glittering moon and was in it and drank the cup. The poor man held in his hands a little round loaf, which he dropped in the dust. Seeing the dervish, the princess smiled. Then, like a flame, she was gone. At the sight of her smile, the dervish fell to the ground. He could no longer sleep either by day or night. Love of the princess had ravaged his soul. to my love. you, 
I knew you were going to make a fool of yourself. So I smiled. But it wasn't from love. It was from pity. Oh. Farewell, ignorant one. The rose never smiles. Each new spring, the rose laughs. The nightingale, it chews a love that doesn't die. Oh, hey, 
they drag me down. Do I ever rest? <laughs> We're tired. Well, have you any news of the sun? No, not since last night. Get out! Get out! You're in danger! What danger? I know what I'm saying. I haven't seen the sun in ever so long. I've been flying for years and years. Always in the dark. I've flown so long. But I've lost my wings and feathers. And I tell myself, perhaps I've flown beyond the sun. Blood can see. You're out of your mind. You quite simply lost your way. Lost my way? No. I've flown so long, always in the dark, that I've come out on the opposite side. You're dreaming. You say you've lost your wings and feathers searching for the sun. But in the dark, how could you go anywhere? You were like an end, the bottom of a well, hoping to reach the moon. If you want to sleep, then sleep. The night is waiting for me. I'm going into the dark to ask for news of the sun. At first, there were many hundreds and hundreds of birds. The birds that set off filled the world. <coughs> Some time, 
I suffered from a gigantic longing for an eggplant. <laughs> this desire to eat an eggplant never left me day nor night. At the same time, something told me that if I ate an eggplant, a disaster would occur. I tried to think of other things. My work, my family, oranges, sheep. But I always ended up with an eggplant. An eggplant. In the end, as you can imagine, my desire triumphed. My mother bought me an eggplant. She cooked it very well, and I began to eat it. But I had not yet finished half of the eggplant when there was a knock on the door. A man came in, and he put my son's head on the ground. They just chopped off the head of my son. So I decided I would spend the rest of my life trying to understand the connection between my eating an eggplant and the chopped off head of my son. I gave up everything. Absolutely everything. I came here. And since that day, I was searching for the answer. And you found nothing? As you see, I am illuminated. You're right. You're absolutely right. Listen, one day, I'd only been here a few months, a year perhaps. Suddenly on the ground I saw something shining. It was a shiny stone. I picked it up. Look, here it is. It's a piece of mica. When I looked at myself in this mica, I saw that I had a magnificent beard. <coughs> so like a flash, piece of wood and I cut it into a cone. Ooh. And you're right. I only think about my beard. <laughs> Before it was an eggplant. And tucked away in the desert it's a beard. My whole life is devoted to my beard. <laughs> but no more. <coughs> You'll see. I'm going to tell you how I live. Go, gone. I give you to the wind. Damn it, wretched bitch. Not a hair left. Not one.
a battle to cross the desert on foot. Walking, I wanted to see the Simon. And you saw him. So I set out on foot, and I crossed the desert. That must have been very painful. I walked for 14 years. And you came to the end of the desert? Yes. Is it so far? On foot, it's hard to tell. Have you seen the Simon? What did I? The Simon? No, no, I haven't seen the Simon. When I reached the end of the desert, I said to myself, here is the kingdom I've been praying for so fervently. I kept faith with my vow. I decided to turn back. You came up seeing the Simorg? I couldn't look back myself farther. I reached my limit. It was useless to go on. And you're still walking? Still walking? Yes. I must be true to my vow. Bon voyage. Ruffles his feathers. 
my life. I've measured the winds. When this life leaves me, bury me where you wish. And so, good night. What do you see? Look! Up there! A mountain! And it went into the valley! You see? No! I can't see anything over there! Yes! Straight ahead! Yes! Let's go! Yes. Oh, it's steady, birds! Make no mistake, we haven't arrived. The journey's not over. What are you saying? The desert is only an empty room. If you have wounds, don't tell anyone. The real suffering starts here. I'm trying to find my way. Is this how you hope to find it? If I want to find it somewhere, I must look everywhere. Most people go no farther, but we've risked everything to understand the perfection of an atom. We must plunge like madmen with only our folly to lean on. Why are you turning? And why are you watching the ball? Because it's in movement like she is. It's lost like she is. Both have neither head nor foot. The ball knows her and she knows the ball and they can speak to one another. The ball is happier than she. Why? <laughs> because I hit it from time to time with my stick. <laughs> what? Is this real? She is like the ball. But she <laughs> suffers more. <laughs> Every time I hit the ball, living my life <coughs> become one. But she is separate from her love. She feels the blows. Don't 
night without shouting, who goes there? Don't sleep. Watch your heart. There are thieves abroad. an immense void. Here, the seven oceans are just a pool. The seven planets a mere speck. The seven heavens a corpse. The seven hells splintered ice. Here, the ant has the strength of a hundred elephants. And one can't tell why. What is this valley? It's not as easy to cross as you might think. If you halt, you turn to stone and you die. If you continue to the end of time, you hear a cry. Oh. On! Have you ever seen birds? An astrologer set out a tablet and cover it with sand. She traces the stars and the planets, the heavens and the earth. The zodiac. She reads omens good and bad. She finds a house of birth and of death. Then she takes a tablet by a corner and scatters the sand. I see no meaning to my existence. There is nothing but wind. There is nothing but wind. There is nothing but wind. All is lost and all they're not done. Good or bad. Everything I've said. And everything I've done is no meaning to my existence. Oh, my God. 
nothing has a secret. Listen, if you were to watch the world burn until hearts were ashes, this would only be a dream. If all were wiped away from the fish to the moon, <laughs> you would still find at the bottom of a well a lame man's paw. And it could all begin again. Even if the two worlds were suddenly annihilated, do not deny the existence of a single grain of sand. There were no trace left, neither of men nor Jews. Consider the secret of a drop of rain. traveler enters the sixth valley, he disappears as does the earth on which he walks, and he remains astonished. What can the mind do here? It stays on the threshold like a child born blind. We are crossing the valley of bewilderment.
like a man for big eight of the skin.
like to just, because they're at the last show and we're also doing video, uh, I'd like to thank uh, and introduce some people. The composer of the music, uh, Eric Gent and Justin Garcia. Ensemble's only as, as, as great as its individual members. Another thing I was telling the actors is like, you can have a great director and lousy actors, but you can't make a great play. You can have uh, a great director and great actors. No, you can have great actors. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a, uh, a lousy director and great actors, and they make a lousy play. But when you have a great director and you have great actors like this, no, but I'd like to introduce them individually. Lightfoot Hawkins. Yeah. Costumes. And uh, a man who supported me during uh, both Rhinoceros and Men, Women, and Dreams, and now this production, uh, who's our set designer and hopefully will stick around for a long time, Carlos Uriba. And uh, because we're process oriented and because we're making a video, no, uh, <laughs> we did this last night, we don't do it every night. But we just want to know if anyone has any questions or anything they'd like to say. Nice pants. Paula, Paula, Paula. Besides my pants, is there anything anyone would like to ask about the ensemble, how we work, uh, who we are, or our count of 15, if there are no questions or comments? a lot of work before you get to the word, before you get to the script. Yeah. yeah, yeah definitely. That's what I thought. That's why it's powerful. No, we work, uh, it's not only because they're young actors, but you just work, you have to train physically as well as voice, so you start with that base. So some people like Felicity have been working with me for three years, some for two, some just began. But there's a training that I do that's based on Grotowski and also Etienne de Crew, and, uh, and it's to, you know ensemble exercises and training, uh, and that's the source of, and that's how I approach this piece. Is because if you do, if you read the script, it's very uh, wordy, and the thing is, I wanted to make make it experiential for the actors, and that way, experiential for the audience, and experiential means physical, as far as I'm concerned. Any other questions? What do you do next? Next, uh, Theater of Urgency, I don't know who will be in it, but Theater of Urgency in the summer does, uh, we do street theater, which I, 
I have a great affection for because I think that reaches people who don't have the attitude to come to the theater. And over the years, we've gotten a reputation. People call us like Take Back the Night and Community Day and this and that. And uh, theater is a, a political tool, and we try to use it. And we go to the streets in the summer, and that's what we're planning on now. So if you have some kids who are interested, we'll be starting at the beginning of May, and our first performance will be at Take Back the Night, which will be, it's all original work we work on. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.